Good evening. Thanks for joining us on this Tuesday night. I'm Candace Murphy. And I'm Michael Brandon. We're glad to have you with us for Fox 10 News at 9. Bob and Lenise have the night off. Tragedy in South Mississippi today. Two paramedics on their way to help someone were killed when their ambulance slammed into an 18-wheeler. Tonight, the victims are being remembered as heroes. The crash happened in Greene County, northwest of Leakesville. The paramedics were responding to a wreck when the crash happened. Fox 10 News reporter Katie Weiss just returned from the accident scene. Katie, tell us what happened. Well, Michael and Candace, we do know that the ambulance had its sirens and lights on as it approached two big rigs. The ambulance managed to pass one of them, but as it was passing the second one, investigators say that 18-wheeler made a sudden left turn right into the path of the ambulance. This was the fiery scene today around 11 a.m. in Greene County, Mississippi. Officials say this is where it happened, near the intersection of Highway 63 and Piog Plaza Road. According to officials, two paramedics were in an ambulance with their lights and sirens on when they came upon two 18-wheelers. The ambulance passed one of the semi-trucks, but when they tried to pass the second one, the 18-wheeler took a left turn, turning right in front of the ambulance. Mississippi Highway Patrol officers tell me the two vehicles caught fire on impact, instantly killing the two paramedics. The driver of the 18-wheeler, 47-year-old Charles Bexley of Beaumont, Mississippi, was sent to Perry County General Hospital for minor injuries. And this is all that's left of the scene. You can see the black char on the mud from where the two vehicles burst into flames upon impact. You can also see pools of water standing from where crews put that fire out. Brent Barfield with the Mississippi Highway Patrol tells me the ambulance did have the right of way because they were responding to a medical call. Um, you know, anytime something like this happens, you know, it doesn't matter what it is. They're, they're, they get in that ambulance and, and, you know, if it were me and I call the ambulance, I want them there as quick as they can. He says he knew the victims personally and the paramedics should always be remembered for their service to Greene County. Them guys, they're out there, uh, men, women alike are out there every day. They put this uniform on, they ride that ambulance every day, you know, to help us, to help the public. So, you know, those guys don't need to be forgotten because, you know, this, this is what they do. They're here for us. Wow. The names of the paramedics killed have not yet been released. The crash remains under investigation. Thanks, Katie. Well, an all-out, all-points bulletin tonight for a man police say shot a woman inside her home. The victim's family tells us the whole thing happened in front of her children. Take a good look at the suspect. He's 42-year-old Julius Tolbert. Neighbors tell Fox 2 News the victim was arguing with Tolbert at her home on Valera Street this morning. Tolbert is allegedly the father of her infant. Neighbors say she ran inside the house and the suspect followed her. Moments later, the woman came out saying she had been shot. Tolbert allegedly fired more shots at another man outside the house. No word on the victim's condition tonight. So take another good look at the suspect, Julius Tolbert. If you know where to find him, call Mobile Police tonight. Meanwhile, police have named a suspect wanted in a connection to a deadly shooting. Investigators say the guy on your screen right there, Darius Chestnut, gunned down 19-year-old Dave Populus. It happened on Friday night on Ridge Street. We told you yesterday that Populus had also been shot back in April, but declined to move forward with the prosecution of the suspect. Earlier today, police told us that Chestnut was the suspect in that shooting as well. Take one more good look at the suspect. If you know where he's hiding tonight, call Mobile Police. New tonight at 9, we're hearing from a woman who was attacked at a Target in Westmobile. Kathy Downey says she was robbed in broad daylight Saturday afternoon while putting groceries in her car. She says she was thrown to the ground so hard that her front teeth were knocked out. She's hoping her story will help put her attacker behind bars. Other than reaching for the keys uh -huh. to hit the panic button, mm -hmm. I was looking on the ground for the teeth because mm -hmm. I instantly knew. Kathy Downey was lying face down on the asphalt in the Target parking lot on Schillinger Road. 
She says she had just been thrown to the ground by a man trying to steal her purse. Downey says she was very aware of her surroundings, even noticed the car pulling up right next to her buggy while she was unloading groceries. She says even though her hand was on one of the handles of her purse, that didn't stop the robber from coming after her. He yanked me and the purse down, and so I fell face forward. Um, landing on my left knee um, and my left hand, of course, was still holding on to the purse. Downey says when she hit the ground, her two front teeth were knocked out, but she wasn't giving up. I lunged for my purse again and couldn't reach it, but as he stumbled getting up with my purse, he got up and then grabbed my purse. Um, I grabbed my keys and hit the panic, uh, panic button and was just, you know, bless it, my keys fell out. Downey says witnesses helped her up and one man even chased after the suspects who got away in this white Pontiac Grand Am. She's recovering from a sprained ankle, bruised knees, scraped hands and a possible hairline fracture to her elbow. You know, a lot of women ask me, why didn't you just let go of your purse? And it never crossed my mind. It, first of all, it happened so fast, but you know, I saw him lunging toward my purse that was in my hand, and I'm thinking, no, that's mine. Downey says she's been in and out of the doctor's office, and she's feeling better every day. She says she even got her purse back after the robbers dumped it. I feel blessed mm -hmm. that I got everything back um, except for my iPhone and, and the cash mm -hmm. and my teeth. Well, she's definitely in good spirits for what happened. Downey described the suspects as a male and female with blonde hair in their early 20s. She says her attacker was about 6 feet tall, 180 pounds, wearing a white hat and a white shirt. Now, Downey says a woman was driving the Pontiac. Here's another look at the car. If you know anything about the case, call Mobile Police. New at 9, a reverse DNA search leads Daphne Police to a man who allegedly robbed three people at gunpoint back in 2011. Police say 22-year-old Larry Wooten Jr. held up two men and a woman at Seacliff Apartments. The case remained unsolved for three years, but a few months ago, Wooten was arrested on theft charges. He had a DNA sample taken, and police say that turned out to be their big break. That's because DNA taken from, from a bandana that was left behind at the 2011 robbery matched Wooten's DNA. Daphne police found out, found out about the match in a letter. You get an odd letter in the mail from the Department of Forensic Science that you're not expecting. Um, you know, it always piques your curiosity. And then, of course, when you open it and they tell us that they've got a uh, hit through the national database CODIS of, uh, of a cold case that we had that they now have a suspect for us. Uh, yeah, it ramps us up a little bit. Now, Wooten was arrested when he went to the Daphne Justice Center to pay some traffic fines. And as we start things off here from the smart board, for some of you, conditions have gone dry and a lot calmer than what we saw earlier this afternoon. But if you live north of Interstate 10, you've been in the sweet zone today to see heavy rain and tremendous amounts of lightning, which of course are the two biggest dangers underneath any summer thunderstorm. And the strongest thunderstorm we have across our viewing area is showing up farther inland across places like uh, Jackson in central Clark County. We'll go full screen and give you a better look at this storm. And this is where we are seeing the biggest issue right now. Look at the tremendous amounts of lightning that are showing up from the north and east of Chatham near Jackson and near Grove Hill. The lightning this afternoon and this evening has been tremendous farther inland. We've seen over 200 strikes with some of these storms. In fact, as of right now, if we start a box located just to the north and east of Chatham and run it all the way down, well, that produces 63 strikes, but let's try to include more of this storm. Let's try to go all the way to State Highway 59, and that produces about 166 lightning strikes from this one cluster of storms in this red box. And keep in mind, tomorrow we're expecting to see another round of this again. There is also thunderstorms that have been popping up across Baldwin County, at least more of the southern tier of Baldwin County. We'll get to that one after I show you what's happening around Citronelle, Leakesville, and Loosedale. Not that much lightning, but moderate to heavy rainfall occurring across Green, George, Northern Mobile, and Washington counties. As far as what we are seeing on the eastern shore, at least east of Bay Minette, that is where some strong thunderstorms are located, knocking on the doorstep of the Florida state line. These will all be fading away later tonight, which is excellent news. At current conditions, not bad. 71 in the Port City. 
81, though, in Pensacola. Look at how warm it feels in the city of Five Flags. 86 is the current heat index with a southwest wind at 8 miles an hour. For the rest of tonight, we're going to see the storms fade away. There will be a 40% chance of additional rain and thunderstorm activity tomorrow afternoon. And then we do stay in this typical summer pattern, guys, with highs in the low 90s, lows in the low 70s. But it is looking like the weekend is going to give us a little bit of a break in the rain chances. They look to fall big time and we'll talk more about that a little later this hour. That is good to know. Ex Definitely. Excellent news for sure. Very good start planning know. for that week. And even though it's only Tuesday, we have something to look it forward to. It is never too early to That's start right. planning for that That's weekend. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks, Michael. All right. Well, we're just getting started here on Fox 10 News at 9. If you're looking to land a job at Airbus, you may need some training first. That's exactly what the AIDT Aviation Training Facility is offering. 